Welcome to this Spoken Tutorial on working with regular files in Linux. Files and directories together form the Linux file system. In a previous tutorial, we have already seen how to work with directories. You can find the tutorial at this website. In this tutorial, we will see how to handle regular files. We have already seen in another tutorial how we can create a file using the cat command. For details, please visit this website. Let us see how to copy a file from one place to another. For this, we have the cp command. Let us see how the command is used. To copy a single file, we type cp space one or more of the options space the name of the source file space the name of the destination file. To copy multiple files at the same time we write cp space one or more of the options the name of the source files that we want to copy and the name of the destination directory in which these files would be copied. Let us now see an example. First, we open a terminal. We already have a file named test1 in our home directory. To see what is in test1, we type cat space test1 and press enter. As we can see, the content of test1 is shown. Now if we want to copy it into another file called test2, we would write cp space test1 space test2 and press enter. Now the file has been copied. If test2 does not exist, it would be first created and then the content of test1 will be copied to it. If it already existed, then it would be silently overwritten. To see the copied file, type cat space test2 and press enter. We can also copy files from and to different directories. For example, type cp space slash home slash onirban slash arc slash demo1 which is the name of the file that we want to copy space slash home slash onirban slash demo2 and press enter. What this will do is that it will copy the file demo1 from the source directory slash home slash onirban slash arc to the destination directory slash home slash onirban. It will copy to a file whose name is demo2. To see whether demo2 is there, type ls space slash home slash Nirban and press enter and as you can see here is demo 2. Before moving ahead let us clear the screen. If you want the file to have the same name in the destination directory you may not even mention the file name. For example type cp space slash home slash onirban slash arc slash demo1 space slash home slash onirban slash and press enter. This will again copy the file demo1 
present in the slash home slash onirban slash erc directory to slash home slash onirban directory to a file whose name will be demo1 as well. As before, to see demo1 type ls slash home slash onirban and press enter and as you can see demo1 file is there. Again before moving ahead let us clear the screen. Another instance when we do not need to give the destination file name is when we want to copy multiple files. We assume that we have three files named test1 test2 and test3 in our home directory. Now we type cp space test1 space test2 space test3 space slash home slash onirban slash test dir and press enter. This will copy all the three files named test1, test2 and test3 to the directory slash home slash onirban slash test dir without changing their names. To see that these files have actually been copied, we will type ls space slash home slash onirban slash test dir and press enter. As, as you can see test1, test2 and test3 are present in this directory. There are many options that go with CP. Here we will see only the most important of them. Let us first go back to the slides. Among the options the capital R is an important one. It causes recursive copying of an entire directory structure. Let us see an example. Let us try to copy all the contents of the test DIR directory to a directory called test. For that we would type cp space test DIR slash space test and press enter. As you can see from the output message, normally we cannot copy a directory having some content directly with the cp command. But using the minus r option, we can do this. Now we type cp space minus capital R space test dir slash space test and press enter. The files have now been copied. To see whether the test directory actually exists, type ls and press enter. As you can see, the test directory exists. Let us clear the screen. To see the contents inside test, type ls space test and press enter. You can see the contents of the test directory. Now we go back to the slides. We have seen if a file is copied to another file that already exists, the existing file is overwritten. Now what if we inadvertently overwrite an important file? To prevent anything like this to occur, we have the minus B option. This makes a backup of each existing destination file. We can also use the minus I interactive option. This always warns us before overwriting any destination file. Now let us see how the mv command works. This is used for moving files. Now how is that useful? It has two major uses. 
It is used for renaming a file or directory. It also moves a group of files to a different directory. MV is very similar to CP which we have already seen. So let us quickly see how MV can be used. We open the terminal and type MV space test1 space test2 and press enter. This will rename the file named test1 which was already present in the home directory to a file named test2. If test2 already existed then in, it would be overwritten silently. If we want a warning before a file is overwritten we can use the minus i option with the mv command. Say we have another file named onirban. This file we also want to rename as test2. We will type mv space minus i space onirban space test2 and press enter. As you can see a warning is provided asking whether test2 should be overwritten or not. If we press Y and then press enter, the file would be actually overwritten. Like CP, we can use MV with multiple files. But in that case, the destination should be a directory. Before moving ahead, let us clear the screen. Suppose we have three files named abc.txt, pop.txt and push.txt in our home directory. To see their presence, type ls and press enter. Here are the files pop.txt, push.txt and uh, abc.txt. Let us clear the screen. Now we want to move these three files to a directory called testdir. What we need to do is type mv space abc.txt pop.txt space push.txt and then the name of the destination folder which is test dir and press enter. To see them type ls space test dir and press enter. You can see the files abc pop and push dot txt. Now let us see some options that go with mv. Let us first go back to the slides. The minus B or minus backup option is present with the MV command. It will backup every file in the destination before it is overwritten. The minus I option that we have already seen warns us before overwriting any destination file. The next command we will see is the RM command. This command is used for deleting files. Go back to the terminal and type ls test dir. We can see a file named faq.txt present. Say we want to delete it. For this we type rm space test dir slash faq.txt and press enter. This command will remove the file faq.txt from the test dir directory. To see whether the file has been actually removed or not, let us again press ls space test dir and press enter. We can no longer see the file faq.txt. We can use the rm command with multiple files as well. 
The test TIR directory contains two files ABC2 and ABC1. Suppose we want to remove these files ABC1 and ABC2. For this we would type rm space test tir slash abc1 space test tir slash abc2 and press enter. This will move the files abc1 and abc2 from test dir directory. To see whether they have been removed, type ls space test dir again. You can no longer see abc1 and abc2. Let us clear the screen before moving ahead. Now let us go back to these slides. Let us summarize what we just said. That is, to delete a single file, we write rm and then the name of the file. To delete multiple files, we write rm and the name of the multiple files that we want to delete. Now let us look into some of the options of the rm command. Sometimes a file is write protected. Using rm will not delete the file then. In this case, we have the minus F option which can be used to force delete a file. The other common option is the minus R option. Let us see where these options are useful. Let us switch back to the terminal. RM command is not normally used for deleting directories. For that we have the RMDIR command. But rmdir command normally deletes a directory only when it is empty. What if we want to delete a directory that has a number of files and subdirectories inside? Let us try the rm command to do this. Let us type rm and the directory that we want to delete which is testdir and press enter. From the output message you can see that we cannot use the rm directory to delete test dir. But if we combine the minus r and the minus f option then we can do this. Press rm minus rf space test dir and then press enter. Now the test dir directory has been successfully deleted. Let us now go back to the slides to study the next command. The CMP command. Sometimes we need to check whether two files are same. If they are same then we may delete one of them. Also we may want to see whether a file has changed since the last version. For these and many other purposes we can use the CMP command. It compares two files byte by byte. <coughs> to compare file 1 and file 2, we would write cmp space file 1 space file 2. If the two files have exactly the same content, then no message would be shown. Only the prompt will be printed. If there are differences in their contents, then the location of the first mismatch will be printed on the terminal. Let us see how CMP works. We have two files named sample1 and sample2 in our home directory. Let us see what they contain. Type cat sample1 and press enter. It contains the text this is a Linux file to test the CMP command. The other file, sample2, will contain the text and to see that we will type cat sample2 and press enter. It will contain the text. This is a Unix file to test the CMP command. Now we would apply the CMP command on these two files. We will write 
cmp space sample 1 space sample 2 and press enter as we can see the first difference between the two files sample 1 and sample 2 is pointed out let us clear the screen before moving ahead to the next command the next command we will see is the wc command this command is used to count the number of characters words and lines in a file we have a file named sample 3 in our home directory let us see its content for that we would type cat space sample 3 and press enter this is the content of sample 3 now let us use the wc command on this file for that we would write wc space sample 3 sorry sample 3 and press enter this command points out that the file has 6 lines 67 words and 385 characters these were some of the commands that help us to work with files there are many more commands moreover each of the command that we saw has many other options I encourage you to see more about them using the man command. This brings me to the end of this tutorial at last. Spoken Tutorial Project is a part of the Talk to a Teacher project supported by the National Mission on Education through ICT, MHRD, Government of India. More information on the same is available at the following link http colon double slash spoken dash tutorial dot org slash n m e i c t dash intro. This is Onirban signing off. Thanks for joining.